to sit in the house and to ask questions directly to the, the, the minister. This is a job. We have to sit in the house, but if we can, for very serious reason, I think it, uh, it is helpful. Oh, I think that uh, MP should be in person in Parliament. Well, my mother passed away in November. I was in the, the hospital room with her, continuing to do work for my constituents. Uh, it was about two weeks before she passed on. And we have had to, I've been in this, uh, this house for a long time. Prior to 2020, we had no provisions for that. When COVID-19 shut down the world in March 2020, Parliament adapted, setting up a first-in-Canadian history hybrid option where MPs could participate in person or virtually. Now the government wants to make that setup permanent, announcing plans to make the govern-from-home model the new way to govern. So joining me now is government house leader Mark Holland. We're going to talk about this. You know, uh, welcome to, to Power Plays. Good to have you on the show. I've got a lot of questions for you because, you know, the hybrid parliament was a brilliant workaround during the pandemic. The voting application allowed parliamentarians to func the parliament to function and parliamentarians to vote. And now you want to make that permanent. So is this totally for MPs' convenience or do you govern better when you govern from home? Well, Joyce, I think you're seeing over the last uh, while members of parliament be in the chamber in huge numbers. Uh, they're using the hybrid provisions sparingly um, to be at those really critical moments in their personal lives and with their constituents. And uh, as you heard uh, just in the lead up to this story, uh, members have used it in very difficult times, either in their health, uh, for their health or for those of their families. So it provides a little bit of flexibility. But really, in terms of the operation of the House, uh, you've seen uh, that question period occur committees do their work, parliament does their work, uh, without a lot of change. But that, that ability to have a little bit of flexibility uh, makes all the difference, um, I think, for members and really also uh, the future folks that we hope uh, come to serve this place. Well, I mean, that, 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 Mark Holland, that, that's not a little bit of flexibility, that's a lot of flexibility. Because you're making that if I'm understanding the way this is going to work, you're making that the rule rather than the exception. Um, you could, for instance, keep your voting app, allow people when they have, like the, the, the MP, the New Democratic MP who said he was by his mother's side, understandably there are times when people cannot come to work and it's legitimate, but they could still vote. But what you have done is you have made that the model. So it's not an exception to work outside of Parliament. Now it will be the, a rule. Well, it's not the rule. I mean, the, re the reality, as you said uh, in the lead up here, uh, during the depths of COVID, we had to find an innovative solution to allow members of parliament um, to work at distance uh, and to make sure that the business of government still continued forward. And we were able to do that. Uh, now what you're seeing, with those provisions have been in place, even as the public health situation is stabilized, you're seeing members of parliament in, in very regular numbers filling the chamber because that's where members want to be. Uh, but there are instances uh, where uh, members have critical needs to be uh, in their ridings, to be either with their families or with their constituents for very important uh, events. And what you've seen over the last uh, uh, couple of years is members be able to balance that very effectively. Uh, we continue to have a question period every day. We continue to have committees functioning, uh, debate occurring in Parliament vigorously. Uh, there has been no change on that basis. But that flexibility does make a huge difference. And, you know, it is, you know, for me, I talked earlier about about my friend Arnold Chan, who uh, I watched in the lobby of, uh, of the House of Commons, uh, doubled over in pain. Uh, you know, his dedication to Parliament was that he wanted to be there, but the practical reality of him having no other way to participate is that he had to drag himself into that circumstance um, as he was nearing the end of his life uh, and wasn't able to do that remotely. That doesn't make any sense. And that's what we've seen with these provisions, the little bit of flexibility allowing people when they're sick or when they have a serious event in their family or when something's really critically important in their family's lives that they're able to be there. Remember, like, we're just finishing yeah. 10 weeks here uh, in Parliament. That's a long time. Having a little bit of flexibility goes a long way.
No, I, I imagine that a little bit of flexibility does go a long way. But today, Conservative House leader Andrew Scheer said in a statement, and I'll read it to you, Justin Trudeau avoids accountability any chance he gets. He'd rather be on vacation. So it's no surprise he's permanently giving himself the ability to phone it in. Uh, maybe harsh words. Clearly, the Conservatives disagree with you. They think that it should be, the rule should be in person and the exception should be allowed to at least vote remotely, uh, to participate remotely, but that should be the exception. So what do you have to say to the opposition or the Conservatives who are saying that this is a way for you to just phone it in? Well, the Conservatives are one of the heaviest users uh, of virtual Parliament uh, and of voting remotely. In fact, today, uh, if you looked at question period, uh, it was the Conservatives who were most missing. And I find that hypocrisy jarring. Uh, on the one hand, they send out statements on that, uh, like that one, and on the other hand, they talk in hallways about how important these provisions are and the difference that it's made in their lives and their ability to serve their constituents. Uh, and so uh, there's enormous hypocrisy in those statements, and it doesn't recognize the fact that every single question that is answered in question period is answered in person, uh, that there has been no change in accountability in terms of ministerial presence, and it doesn't uh, answer the fact uh, that, that, uh, that members are using and have used these provisions would have been in place with incredible responsibility. And I think it also doesn't answer the fact that we want to call to this place common people. We want people to be able to look at their families and tell them, I can serve my community, I can step up, and don't worry if there's a critical moment in our family's life. I won't be away from that. I'll still be able to do my duties and be there for our family. And I think you've seen parliamentarians use these provisions uh, very responsibly, and that will continue to be the case. Yeah. So, so I'm curious about one thing. There's, you know, is there a rule, for instance, on how many days um, an MP has to be in the House in person? Is there, uh, you know, is somebody supervising attendance? I know that you're not children, but in most jobs. Um, you know, you have to justify whether you're, you're, you're working from home or, or, or not. So who supervises that? And how many days, for instance, does, it, does an MP have to be in person? Or is there no rule for that? Well, you know, the, the, who supervises that is electors. Uh, and, you know, I was first elected in 2004, and I, I won't name them, but I saw individuals uh, in different parties, unfortunately including my own, uh, who didn't show up to Parliament, who decided to be in their ridings for whatever reason and miss votes and not participate. Uh, that's always going to happen, whether or not you have a virtual system or you don't have a virtual system. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it is voters who get to... But a virtual system will probably encourage that... A virtual system could encourage that a little bit more. It could make it sort of legitimate, right? Not, not look, I'm, I'm not saying that the, these are dishonest people, but it, it seems to be a very, uh, a very convenient uh, when it becomes the normal, the norm, that you don't have to show up and that you can be, you know, working in your constituency, for instance. But, I mean, how I would respond to that, Joyce, is we've had these provisions now for three years, and that just simply hasn't been the case. Uh, when the public health uh, conditions have allowed it, members of Parliament have filled the chamber. Every question uh, that has been asked in question period has been responded to in person. Uh, the only exception to that was in the very darkest moments of the pandemic um, when it was simply impossible. Uh, this is where members of Parliament want to be. This is why they run. Uh, but I also know from deep and, uh, and visceral personal experience uh, that it's exceptional important as you are sometimes thousands of miles from home to be there at critical moments and it's about making sure that balance is struck and I think it has been over the last two years I'm certain it will continue to be the guardians of that as is always with our democracy is voters well that ba basically what you're telling me is that this will be without supervision yeah I understand the voters eventually will be able to make their decision have you polled voters have you ask the public or your voters, your constituents, whether this is something that they, they can get behind? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I've had an opportunity over the last two years uh, to have many, many town hall meetings, knock on a lot of doors, talk to huge numbers of folks, not only in my own riding, but in other places. And, and what they care about uh, is, is that we get the business of the country done. What they care about is that government is held to account uh, and that the questions are asked are responded to. And that's exactly what has happened. The committees have been, have been functioning, questions have been answered. Uh, I have not had anyone uh, uh, suggest yeah. um, that this 
model isn't effective. Uh, I think that there's been a lot of noise made by conservatives, but again, it's very frustrating to hear them on the one hand decry it and tell, talk about how horrible it is, and then just go look at who's using it the most. Uh, they're using this and using it with enormous frequency. Well, it certainly is an interesting uh, topic of conversation. Mark Holland, government house leader, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to talk to us. Thank you, Joyce. Appreciate it.